Good morning, people of the internet. I am fresh out of bed, like literally woke up 29 minutes ago and have decided to film this now before I have to go to work later because I have recently decided to try the Diva Cup. Um, I actually tried it yesterday when I got it, but didn't really think about actually videoing it until now which was a mistake. I totally should have done something while I was like trying to put it in, like not film the actual thing. But anyways, so the box is already open. I've destroyed it from the inside. And I, guess, I don't know if this is old news, this thing, but to me it's new because even though I had heard about it for a while, I've never really tried it. And I figured why not make a video about it so that way if anyone else is still kind of wanting to learn about it or what it's like to use it um, kind of early on then maybe you can watch this and figure it out and see if it's maybe right for you or something you want to try. So for me personally I need to find an alternative to pads because for my whole life, I've really only ever used pads. I hate tampons and I've always hated tampons. I have tried to use them before. Like I tried to use them in grade school and high school, university, basically all the schools and they just don't work for me. I find them super, super uncomfortable. And I don't know if it's the, I have a thing with textures. It's the same thing with food. So like yogurt is a whole, thing for me to eat because of the texture and I hate pudding because of the texture but like um anyways the tampons are like cottony right and I find them incredibly uncomfortable no matter what size or how I put them in or whatever they are uncomfortable I can feel them they're scratchy they're painful to remove frankly um and I can just constantly feel it in my body and I don't like it. So I just sort of swore off them for years and years and years and I've made pads work. But now I need to find an alternative to pads because I'm in a position where sometimes I need to wear um, like leggings or a bathing suit or something like that. Now I have a lot of seamless underwear. So, and I will swear by seamless underwear. I freaking love them. They're like, regular underwear you don't have to wear a thong if you don't want to and there's no seam so like it, it, it is literally seamless like the fabric is so thin and so soft and pretty and comfortable and you usually can't actually see any type of panty line when you're wearing them even with leggings so normally i'll wear that but those are my cute underwear i'm not wearing those when i have my period Every girl has like their cute underwear and their everyday underwear and then their sexy underwear, but then they have their period underwear. And I have worn a pad with the seamless underwear underneath leggings before. Um, so I'm trying this cup thingy. One of my friends uses it and she likes it. Um, so I've been grilling her about it. <laughs> And yesterday I put it in, I had it in for a couple of hours and it was okay. Honestly, like I could feel it, but not really. Like it wasn't anything like a tampon. It is kind of difficult to get in and I found it more difficult to get out. Like putting it in was just kind of like, all right, it's in there. And now what? <laughs> but getting it out was a little bit more difficult because you literally have to like reach inside of your own body and grasp it and turn it and squeeze it and then take it out. And I couldn't get a good enough grip really to turn it. And so it was like, I was just gonna slowly like wiggle pulling it out and it kind of hurt a little bit because there's like this suction thing that helps keep it in there and from leaking and I don't really think you should just like pull something that has suction out because that's bad but I kind of did that and I don't recommend it um 
but so when you have like this box which like I said I've already opened so normally like the cup is in the window and you know this is all closed and stuff but I'm now using the box as the container for all of the things that go with the cup this one's a diva cup so I think there are other ones like there was like a life brand and there was also a Tampax I think version um, they were all pretty much the same price, which I live in Canada, um, and it was like $39.99, which was annoying. I thought it would be like $20, but it ended up being $20 more than what I thought it would be. But I mean, in the long run, if you're actually using it, I guess it since it's reusable, you're not spending a whole bunch of money on like packs of pads or packs of tampons. So I guess in the long run, you could pick up like two of these, spend like 80 bucks, but then you're not buying a whole bunch of pads, which are like, depending on what kind and how many you're getting at a time and all that. Like in the long run, I think it probably kind of saves you money, but we'll see. Um, so I also got this wash, uh, menstrual cup cleaner, 100% plant-based and pH balance. Good to know. Um, so I got the actual one that's like for the brand it's Diva Wash. Um, and I was, it's like $10 more for this at Shoppers Drug Mart. And I was thinking about not getting it because I was like, okay, like I'm already spending $40 on this freaking cup. And do I want to spend more money? And like I didn't, but then I did because I thought about it and I was just going to try and use like an unscented soap and then like vinegar to kind of disinfect it and then obviously rinse it because I don't want vinegar in my hoo-ha. But like, um, I opted not to do that because this wash is specifically for the cup and like it's safe. Like if, if any of it is remaining like obviously you're supposed to rinse it off you don't just like put this on it and put it back in there but like this is safe it's not gonna hurt the cup it's not gonna do anything it's specifically designed for it um ooh, it's not tested on animals that's good i like that but um basically i already have enough issues i have endometriosis um and i don't need any other complicated shit going on with my reproductive system. So I decided to just go with this because I didn't want to accidentally give myself like a yeast infection or some other stupid problem just because I wasn't using the right soap and cleaning it. And the instructions that came with the cup specifically say, don't use vinegar on it. So glad I didn't go that route. Um, I don't know, maybe it's too acidic for it or something like that. Cause it's made out of silicone, I think. It's recyclable. Also, these are made in Canada, so that's cool. Um, I'm gonna read the back of the box. So it says, join the inner revolution with Diva Cup. The Diva Cup is economical, eco-friendly, and leak-free way to experience total period comfort. Then it also says that it's ultra hygienic, comfortable, convenient, Wearable for up to 12 hours at a time. 100% medical grade silicone. There we go, it's silicone. With no latex, dyes, rubber, plastic, or BPA. Reusable, economical, and eco-friendly. And a product made in Canada. Ooh, they have Instagram. Oh, I'm gonna follow them. And then it also says, attention. Menstrual cups are personal hygiene medical devices and cannot be returned or exchanged. But you probably knew that already sassy all sales are final bag and user guide enclosed please read the user guide carefully before use so user guide it's so little if you have a problem reading tiny words get someone else to read this for you <laughs> or get a magnifying glass or like wear glasses or something so it congratulates you Congratulations on choosing the Diva Cup, the revolutionary menstrual care product. It's funny because this is like 
revolutionary and stuff, but I was a history major. There's my degree. And I don't, you know, I didn't like take a class on what did women use when they had their periods. But I do know a sponge was a thing. And they literally like took a sponge and it was like, it was in there. So I don't know if this is like revolutionary as in a new idea. This could have been something that people were doing for a long time and we just sort of brought it back in a modern way. Who knows? But anyways, um, so this instruction thing has the consumer care team number and a whole bunch of other stuff in here literally telling you to boil your diva cup first you gotta cook it up with some mac and cheese and then it tells you how to insert the diva cup now i'm assuming the boiling is just kind of a disinfectant process right because you're taking it out of the box you're touching it who knows it's been on the shelf i don't know if dust gets in the box I don't know who's touching it or doing stuff. Like, I don't know, maybe someone licked it before they put it in the box. Bottom line is you want that thing clean before you're putting it in your body. So like you boil it for 10, 15 minutes. And when I did this yesterday, I like spooned it out carefully with a metal spoon. And then it wasn't even really hot. Like I touched it pretty much right away and it was warm but not like, oh my God, it's hot or anything like that. Like it was pretty good. I thought it'd be warmer. Um, so yeah, it says how to insert the cup. Step one, fold the cup. And then it shows you two different kinds of folds. So you fold and the push down fold. And it's funny, this picture looks like it's like a labia already and it's not, it's just a picture of the fold. And then inserting the diva cup step two and i really like it like tells you how to do it but then at the bottom it says breathe you've got this and you like that it's supporting us because like it is weird to do this and then it has this lovely little diagram of your insides and like with the little words bladder uterus vagina urethra Bladder and urethra, obviously that's the wrong hole. You don't want it in there. That would hurt. Um, and it has like little tips on the side. So like aim the folded diva cup towards your tailbone at the base of your spine away from the cervix. So like that way. Um, and then there's two more diagrams, which is good. But anyway, so Can this focus, please? No? Okay. Um, so it's got like this diagram, it's saying how to rotate it, and then this one. Now, as you can see from the slightly burly, blurry images, this girl's fingers are like in there a little bit, you know? Like not a lot, but they're in there. And I'm like, if you're like me, maybe this is TMI, but if you're like me and you're tiny, there's not a lot of room for this shit. Like, not saying nothing's ever been in there, but um, <laughs> if I've already got a thing, an object in there, there's not a lot of wiggle room. There's not a lot of space for my, for my finger to also be in there, not without it being uncomfortable, especially when everything's already swollen. Um, so if you have any type of like condition where you like it's very very sensitive like your vagina and your cervix are very sensitive then obviously i'm sure you already know if you can use tampons or anything like that um but i would probably say that this is most likely not for you um because you're in there a lot <laughs> So, uh, and then there's another thing, you know, to prevent leaking and saying how to cut this, cut, I just said cut, cut the stem if you find that it is too long. Um, yesterday I did not find that it was too long. It was actually okay. Um, and then it just says, you know, how long can I leave the cup in? How do I take it out? And to take it out, it's kind of like, well, it's literally the reverse of putting it in. Um, but it, 
cautions you against aggressively pulling on the stem. Yes, that's fair. And it also says never use a foreign object such as tweezers to remove the cup. Now, obviously, if your vagina like eats it and you can't get it out, um, you're gonna have to like go to a doctor or like get your mom maybe to awkwardly help you. Or, you know, your friends, if you're close enough with your friends, you might say, hey, I need you, or maybe like your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, but be like, hey, I need you to reach up inside my body and get this cup out of me. I don't know, maybe you roll like that. But anyway, you'll need help getting it out if that happens, um, which kind of freaks me out. <laughs> but and then it just has a thing on how to clean it, cleaning and care. It says, just like your skin. Diva Cup deserves the best. Wash it thoroughly with warm water, a mild oil, and fragrance-free soap. Yeah, see, I'm not putting any fucking oil on this. Like, no. No. Um, that's what I have the wash for. So I don't accidentally put anything freaky on it. And then it actually does say, steer clear of. Ah, yawning. Stay clear of home remedies such as vinegar. <laughs> Good thing I didn't do that. Uh, tea tree oil, Castile soap, antibacterial soap. Actually, that makes sense. Uh, hand sanitizers. Ow. Hydrogen peroxide. Ooh. Or any other harsh chemicals. But you probably already knew that. I don't know, I don't consider vinegar to be like a really harsh chemical. A lot of people use it because it's not a harsh chemical. It's not, it's a naturally harsh chemical. Um, although my mom put it in the wash the other day and it like bleached all the towels some weird way, which is confusing and concerning. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's pretty much all it's in here. And then it comes with this little bag which is super cute. I like the bag. Um, for, you know, when you are just carrying around your cup. And I keep burping and yawning. This is a weird start to the day. Here it is. It's a thing. It's a cup. It has little... Made in Canada on it. Um, it's got little, like, fourth of an ounce, half an ounce... And like 15 milliliters, 7.5 milliliters, or 15 milliliters, 1.5 milliliters, and 7.5 milliliters on it. For some reason, the numbers are printed on the inside of the cup. Like, dude, if I want to measure how much is in here, like, I'm not going like this while it's filled with stuff, right? So it's like, why are they on the inside? When you fill up a measuring cup when you're baking, you're not like, let me just pour it in and then like move it out of the way and look at the numbers. No, you look at them on the outside. So that's one design flaw. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's in here now, as you just saw me put it back in here. But I'm kind of keeping everything in the box in the bathroom. By the way, it says you can wear it up to like 12 hours. Obviously that depends on you, what you're doing probably, and then how heavy you are now like I said I have endometriosis and a lot of people associate that with really heavy periods as a symptom and while that is true it is not a symptom that I really have anymore um and I'm not on the pill or anything like that anymore I'm actually totally off of everything I'll put all that in a different video my hands look weird but um so I don't normally have really, really heavy periods. I used to for a while. Now they've gotten pretty light, um, which I don't know if I should be concerned about that or not, but it's convenient for me, I guess. Um, so this is actually also the smallest cup. Cause like I said, I tiny and I didn't think the medium or the large would be very comfortable for me. And then because I am lighter, um, I figured the small one was all I really needed. So hopefully I was right. When I did it yesterday, I still put a pad on, 
because obviously I'm just learning how to use this and I don't think I managed to rotate it the full 360. It says that once it's in there, you, um, you rotate it 360 degrees and that kind of makes a little vacuum seal and that's what keeps it in there and like leak proof so I tried to do that and I couldn't I couldn't tell if I rotated it 360 degrees like I could feel it but I couldn't feel it and it felt weird and um and I know what weird feels like in the nether region okay with endo I've had so many tests I've had transvaginal ultrasounds I've been the gynecologist and the doctor a lot I've had pelvic pelvic exams which are you know done with speculums and swabs and fingers and I know what shit feels like but I couldn't really tell how much it was rotating so I don't really know what to do at that point so I tried my best and um and then I still put a pad on to kind of be able to gauge without ruining my underwear how much it's kind of leaking and it did leak a little bit um so I don't think I had it in there quite right I also might have put it in a little bit too angly so I'm going to try it again today same kind of thing I'm going to wear a pad under it and one of the main reasons I am doing this video now instead of yesterday is not just because it did not occur to me yesterday but also um because so I slept with this out, by the way. I am not ready for that. I'm not sleeping with it in yet, but, um, or I may never sleep with it in unless I have to, but like, I'm going to work and I'm usually working, um, pretty fast pace. Like I can be moving around. I can be standing like stuff changes. So, um, I wanted to see how it would hold up when I'm moving around and also like how it feels when I'm moving around, right? Cause it's gonna feel different if I'm moving around, bending over, picking things up, all that. Um, as opposed to just hanging out at home, you know, doing nothing, sitting, writing, doing laundry, whatever you're doing. So it's kind of gonna be a good test for that. And the other thing is, is when I'm at work, I have a very different kind of bathroom than I do at home. So obviously, like it's not a, the bathrooms are private. Um, there's not just like a whole bunch of stalls like a normal public bathroom. Every bathroom has just like, you know, a toilet and little sink in it and stuff like that. But it's gonna be a good little test. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> of what it's like um, using this kind of thing at work because I don't know I think it it's obviously a little bit more of a process than if you're just wearing a pad um, and changing a pad is pretty quick and easy this requires brain power and also a sink so I don't know we'll see how that part goes um Speaking of that, I gotta skedaddle uh, and go to work. So we are going to go get ready, put this in, which I'm not gonna video or anything. Um, but while I'm at work, when I do go to the bathroom, I will do a quick little update thing. Um, obviously it'll only be like a couple of seconds because I'm at work and I can't stay in there on my phone making a video, but yeah, so I'm going to do that, and then we will talk about... Yeah. <laughs> we will talk about it when I'm done work as well. Um, and then probably keep updating after that on how I like this thing. So, anyway, yeah, it'll be fun. Maybe. Okay, real quick. And I'm going to kind of whisper, because... My family's still sort of sleeping and now I'm more close to them in the bathroom, but I just had a mini freak out because I put the cup in. I should not have done that. Anyway, I put the cup in and was walking down the hallway to get something and I kind of felt like I needed to adjust a little bit. So I came back in here and 
want to adjust it and I couldn't find it. <laughs> it wasn't there. Like I swallowed it with my badge and it scared the hell out of me. So fair warning, if you're using this, you might suck it up. Um, but you might push. Does that make sense? Like there are these things called pelvic floor muscles. And if you like bear down on them, it like pushes it out. If you've ever had a baby, like you know what I'm probably talking about. I have a feeling it's probably the same kind of thing when the doctor was like, push, and you push the baby out. It's your pelvic floor muscles that are going and they're pushing it out. So I think it's probably those. And so I did that and it like pushed it down enough for me to grab it and readjust it. And I was like, okay, cool, panic moment over. But for like five seconds, I was like, fuck, it's in there. I'm never gonna get it out. I'm gonna have to call into work and like go to the doctor and be like, remove this from my body. Anyway, yeah, so that was stressful and that's a thing, but don't freak out, just use your muscles. If you freak out too much, it's probably like the opposite of what you wanna do because your body tenses up when you freak out, um, stress and all that. And so you're probably actually gonna cause more problems if you like freak out and tense up. So if you do freak out, try not to tense up, deep breathe and pretend you're in labor. So anyway, off to work. booty. Oh god, I gotta clean my mirror. But, example, should we ever turn it the other way? Oh, and now we are upside down. Okay. Booty. Can you see the lines? I can't. I am wearing seamless underwear. Um, and the Diva Cup. And I'm wearing a really light pad on my seamless underwear. Just because, like I said, I'm still learning how to use this freaky cup thing. And so um, I want to make sure I'm not really leaking or anything. So also, excuse my room. It's a mess. It's almost always in some sort of minor state of disaster. But even more so right now because I'm going to go to work. So I have stuff all over the place because I was looking for things. And I just got back from Japan. So I've got a whole bunch of laundry to do. Um, and a giant stitch. All right, I'm at work, as you can hear. And I've just gone for a bathroom break to check on things. And so far so good. I've had like a little bit of leakage, but I don't think I'm actually putting it in kind of like properly. I think I'm angling it sort of too much, but not just that, um, I'm having a really hard time rotating it and I can't actually tell if I'm rotating it 360 degrees or not, but it doesn't really feel like I am. And part of the problem is that I can't grip it properly and I tried to use toilet paper but then I can't really like I don't really feel like I feel enough um and so I just use my fingers but I can't really grip it properly because as soon as I start putting it in there my hoo-ha is just like it wants to suck it up like my vagina literally eats it and it's in there so then I have to go like get it twist it. Hopefully it worked. So, some practice required. Um, one thing though is the only thing I don't really like right now, other than the fact that I can't really rotate it, I think it's just a practice thing though, is that I don't know that the cup is super practical for depending on where you work and like or what you do a lot, like if you don't really have access to a kind of private bathroom that has a sink in it, because otherwise you're like, like what are you supposed to take the cup out in a public bathroom and like with your cleanser, you have, what do you have to carry the cleanser everywhere? 
and like wash it off in a public washroom sink a whole bunch of other people either waiting to use the bathroom or right there like also is there blood on your hands no one wants to see that even if you're a girl and you're used to it and you're like yeah go girl i understand you or whatever like it's so weird <laughs> like it's so kind of gross I mean, not weird but like i don't know if I saw someone doing that in the bathroom, I would not really care. I'd be like, yeah, cool, it's effective life. But at the same time, I'd be like, Bleh. So, I don't know. Um, but it's not just like that. It's also just, that's a lot of work and it takes time. And when you work somewhere like pretty fast paced where you can't spend a lot of time in the bathroom dealing with this, it's kind of like a little bit flawed that way, I guess. Um, no. More opinions to come. Okay, so I'm home from work and I can't feel this bitch, even though she's in my body. I'm not sure if my body just ate the cup or if it's just that comfortable. So I guess when I go.